Good morning, everybody. We now return to my favorite show known as Bricky says it's going to get more consistent each week and he lies every single week. Welcome back to an episode of Fireside Bricky. In the background, we have my latest cocaine addiction combined with some battlegrounds and me finally doing the Hawkmoon quest. If you don't want spoilers for the Hawkmoon quest, then I would recommend not watching or at least just listening to this video instead. Granted, I am sure most of you already did the Hawkmoon quest and truly, you really aren't getting spoiled for much if you do watch the video. So, it's all right. Uh, happy later Halloween, post-Halloween, just a bit. It's uh, November 2nd. Today, we're full, fully on into the holidays, going full, going headstrong right back into the world. Thanksgiving is next. Christmas after that. New Year's post. The holidays are in full swing. And, you know, I'm feeling pretty comfy, not gonna lie. Uh, Halloween was a great time. I did actually make the sandworm costume, and I didn't take any pictures because I was too drunk. I apologize, but I did it. I bought myself a big-ass orange onesie. Actually, I bought two of them. And then I went over to Michael's, which for us, Michael's is like an arts and crafts type of store. And I got myself a big foam ring, some Velcro, and some of those like pipe cleaner, some brown pipe cleaner. And I snipped up and cut up the second onesie, covered the circle parts with it, and then glued on the pipe cleaner and used the Velcro to attach it to my head. And I walked around with this, like a $25 in total scuffed ass looking footsie onesie and, and circle with teeth pipe cleaner that kept stabbing me in the face. And eventually I took it off because it was too painful. It was extraordinarily scuffed, but it was so much fun. I had a blast. Everyone was running around some great things. A buddy of mine was uh, the taker from Hell Taker. Uh, another guy was was rolling. Oh, it's got a guy in a you know vault tech suit, and it was it was good. There was a lot of fun stuff. There was better than that as well, but I'm trying to th I can't think of it on top of my head exactly what the other costumes were. But it was good. It was a lot of fun. I had an absolute blast, and uh, it was great to put on the party because it was held at my house, and I'm actually since I'm moving, it was a combination of both like a send off for the house itself. But also, it was just kind of nice to throw a party. Um, luckily, you know, pretty much every single person there either works retail or is, you know, isn't doing as well as I am. So I provide all the alcohol and I provide, well, they bring like chips and maybe like a, like a six pack or whatever. But I generally provide all the alcohol and all the food. Got myself a bunch of pizzas from Round Table. Felt great. It was really good to see everyone, to have like a real party party, get drunk. Haven't gotten drunk like that in a bit, so it felt pretty good. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I hope you all had a pretty good Halloween yourself. Uh, we had like five trick-or-treaters in total. And I think it's just because our neighborhood is is currently, like the neighborhood I'm in right now is fancy and boring as shit. Because uh, that's just what it is, it's boring. Um, but, you know, it's it's whatever it is what it is. Uh, so I had like five trick-or-treaters gave that out get the candy out all was good and then uh, then life that, that was that was Halloween um, October I felt went by really slow for me and then but the Halloween portion of it went by really fast all the all the festivity well it's because I didn't do much all the festivities for Halloween all the fun to be had on Halloween all that kind of stuff just came and went. It was there and it was gone. And, uh, eh, you know, I can't say I, I didn't enjoy myself, but I'm a little sad that I didn't get as much of a fun time with all of it. I would have much rather enj uh, enjoyed more Halloween get togethers and Halloween fun times and get a chance to really, really get around. But I, I didn't. Which is unfortunate. And, uh, well, you know. Eh. I did my best. <laughs> but I still enjoyed the, the festivities in their own right. But just, it's like October went by just so quick. A 
October just came and flew away at such a such a speed. But I think that's how we always think the holidays go, because you're never really. I don't know. You you always think the holidays just come and go. They 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 in and gone so fast. Uh, but honestly, at the same time, um, I feel like, you know you get so prepared and then it's over in a day. And I don't know. You really gotta we gotta add a lot to it. You gotta have like multiple days or something. You gotta have see family more than just the once because getting everything set up and looking great for Thanksgiving or something and then just eating for three, four hours, and then Thanksgiving is over. It, it certainly feels a little too quick at times. I guess it's one of the reasons why maybe Christmas is so much... feels more worth it, because often people celebrate Christmas Eve and, and before Christmas sometimes too, and then Christmas itself, and then you have like that week between Christmas and New Year's where you're almost recovering or hanging out with people, and then you have your New Year's stuff, so it feels like... It's not just Christmas. It feels like it's Christmas and the whole week after. It's a much larger period of time. Plus winter break, of course. I guess that makes more sense if you're still in school. Uh, winter break and having that going on. It's so much planning for such a small thing. But yet, you know, I'd say it's still worth it. It's nice. I think I'm starting to appreciate holidays more as I'm getting older. Just the excuse to be able to go around and everyone takes the time off. You know, that, that right there, the scheduling. The fact that you're able to just not have to constantly run around people's schedules to hang out. Like, I want to go do this with my buddies. I want to go do that with my buddies. But no, you're, everyone's some person's working the night shift. Some person's going to be out of town. Some person has to hang out with, with a girlfriend or boyfriend. All of that. And then, But this time, like, yeah, we all have these days off because we all have break. Because it's that time. Feels good. Feels good. Feels nice. Feels relaxing. Though, granted, I do know a lot of people who get really stressed out when it comes to uh, Christmas, especially. Because buying gifts for people is such a it's such a pain in the butt. Uh, just because you, you have to kind of think what is the extent. Like, oh, I'm going to purchase it for my immediate family and my best friends. But how far down the friend line am I going to go? How much farther down there am I actually going to hit before I've bought everything I need to buy for everybody? Which I guess makes you feel cheap or stingy, but but really there is that thing where it's like expecting someone to get you gifts in this economy is is asking a lot. You know, I I don't think it's unfair to want something from your mom and your dad and for you to give them something back. But shit, like the amount if you have a decent friend group, you're you're just you don't know who you're going to give what to, and it's, it's quite, it's, it's actually kind of stressful, you know? And also, actually, um, humorously enough, if you have your significant other slash wife, husband, whatever, giving, you have to think about getting their, their family all these kinds of gifts. And depending on the size of their family, that can just, that can skyrocket, you know? That can be a ton. So I don't know. It's here, it's there, it's everywhere. It's, it's all its own thing. But I'm happy that it's coming up. The holidays are upon us. The Christmas music is beginning. It's already on its way. I have a rule. No Christmas decorations of any kind until after Thanksgiving. The moment Thanksgiving is off, the tree can come off. But, or can come on. But until then, no, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No. I ain't dealing with that anymore. I ain't dealing with fucking Mariah Carey slowly breaking through the ice like a, like a frozen zombie ready to, to destroy my Walmart experience. I don't actually shop at Walmart, but, you know, if you did shop at Walmart. Man, Walmart is... Walmart is like the great equalizer. You know, you go to a Walmart and it's, it's, like, it's like the Wild West in there, the kind of people you find. Midwestern... Or, or some, either Midwestern or major cities. Not the in-between. The in-between is boring. But major cities and Midwestern areas is very, like, rural cities. Where you find the most interesting people at Walmart. I appreciate Walmart's existence for the cheapness of their products. For the people who really can't afford stuff. But, man. Yo, fuck Walmart. Oh, my God. I just, I totally forgot to. 
Oh no, I'm a such a basic white boy. I'm uh I go get Starbucks all the time because I love my coffee because coffee is delicious. But one of my favorite flavors of just thing is peppermint. I love peppermint. I love chocolate mint ice cream. I love those little just hard peppermint candies, but I particularly like peppermint mocha. Peppermint mocha is so good. And I know that there is this actually this place in Newport Beach. And if you don't know what Newport Beach is, imagine it like Beverly Hills Light, except more for like older plastic surgery white women. In Newport Beach, there's a particular Starbucks because sometimes they have their own dedicated flavor and it's a peppermint chocolate chip foam they put in their fucking cold brew. And yeah, I, I know I'm white as shit, but I'm just saying it's so good and I'm, I'm now looking forward to it because... I, you know, pumpkin spice, eh, you, you know, it's good, but it's, it's no, it's no peppermint mocha. Let me tell you what. It is no peppermint mocha. Actually, pumpkin and pumpkin based products in general really, it's, it's really not about, it ain't about the pumpkin viewers. It's about the Mets, baby. It's really not about the pumpkin. It's about, uh, it's about the nutmeg. I tell you that, like the cinnamon and the nutmeg. Nutmeg is is a heavenly heavenly spice that shit makes it does pumpkin taste good sure but you get a pumpkin pie you gotta you gotta dazzle that bastard with some whipped cream and get some good puffs of nutmeg on it because nutmeg you can't you know you can't spell nutrition without nut and you can't spell nutmeg i fucking love nutmeg actually when i think about it if you ever have, have a Costco near you, the pumpkin pies there are really top tier. I mean, you know, they're not as good as... It. Actually, you know, I've made a homemade pumpkin pie before. I have. And honestly, I don't think it's worth it. Like, a homemade pumpkin pie might be tasty, but the pumpkin pie... Like, it's it's good. It's pretty good. But I don't think the difference between the homemade pumpkin pie and the, and the store-bought pumpkin pie is that massive. There is a difference, but it's not... It's not quite enough for me. There's a lot of things that I've made, like I've made from scratch in my time. And, and some of the things are absolutely way better. Bread, for example. Homemade bread is godly. But then there's just some places where the stuff you get at the restaurant is equivalent, sometimes better. I find that I can't make a deli sandwich as well as actual delis can make it. You know, if I want to make myself my own little sandwich, it's it might taste good even if I got a good sub, but it's never quite as good as the ones I can get from the actual like deli deli. I don't know why that's the case. I really don't. But it damn does it taste good? I really I, I don't know why. I really like it. Boar's head meat. I feel like we talk about food in every goddamn fireside bricky episode. We really seem like we do. It's just it's such a good and universal topic. Uh, anyway, uh, in terms of what's going on in life, um, oh, well, so another reason why this, I guess I didn't did I explain why this video was out a day later. Um, no, I just made my little joke about me being poor at timing. Uh, I was really hungover. That's the simple answer. I was extremely hungover from Halloween and I couldn't film the video. No ifs, ands, or buts. Simply put, I was too hungover to make the video. Last week, I actually... Uh, took my took some time off. Uh, took a lot of time. I actually did a whole week off. I did no streaming the entire week. I did almost no video editing the entire week. I did some. I did a little like a Depths Ridiculous YouTube stream, and I I was on the Chapter Tactics episode for Warhammer, but that was about it. I I took myself a mental health week. I. I felt like I needed it. I just I couldn't bring myself because I didn't know what I wanted to make for a video. I really didn't want to stream. I was getting really tired. I felt physically tired, I think, just from the world and everything. And I wanted to, I don't know, not do anything. I wanted to veg be a vegetable. I mean, I still went out and worked out and I, I went, uh, I went, I did my therapy session, which I always do. Talked with them a little bit. They gave me some interesting advice. Um, they told me that I should be going out 
and being seen. I should be seen. Uh, and, and I guess what they refer to by being seen is that... I guess it's like... Like, I need to go out and, and go work out. Because if you work out, you'll be able to have other people see you working out. Or go to a coffee shop. Buy, buy yourself a damn MacBook and, and go write your autobiography at a, at a coffee shop like those hipsters in the back. Do something like that. You know, go out there and be, be visualized with the people around you. Which I guess is a bit of a, a bit of an odd statement or a bit of an odd ask, but I, I think I kind of get it. Getting a certain amount of socializing, getting a certain amount of, of, of like ability to just kind of be around people, regardless of whether or not said people really give a shit that you're there. But being there alone is in its own right. It feels it feels good. It feels good to to have, I don't know, I don't I don't know how to describe it, just being around there, not being stuck in your own house the whole time, and, and actually having a a reason to go out and do something. So I've been working on that a little bit, trying. I think I might like start writing my my scripts for my videos on at like a coffee shop with a laptop, maybe just go there, get my damn coffee, write a script for a video, because I think. Ironically, I think I work better when I'm out there. I think that's probably one of the psych psychological factors of an office is when you're not at home, you tend to work better because you're in a working environment. I'm hoping that my new apartment that I'm moving to will also help me with that because there's pools and gyms and like a rec room that you can work in and things like that. And I feel like that might actually make it a little bit more, a little easier for me to be able to feel very out there a bit maybe also be more productive who knows I, I don't i don't truly know the extent that that might be handy but it could be really really useful and really workable and it might be good for me i mean if my therapist tells me that's good for me that's probably then i'm hoping it's good for me i mean so far her advice seems to have been working out pretty well um obviously her advice is less so advice well, I guess some of it can be advice, but it's not like a, you should do this. It's like try doing this. If I was if I was talking to her about like relationship problems, she would not tell me how to handle it. She would give me overall advice on on thoughts and thinking and how to uh, look at a situation that way. But that's definitely that's definitely one of them. I will admit it gets kind of it gets pretty lonely here. Um, Maybe that's why I enjoy these firesides, because even though I'm talking to nobody, I'm also talking to everybody. Uh, I don't know, just, you know, having a person here for multiple years and then kind of being here on my own, because I'm inside, I work, and then I work all day, and then when I'm done working, I'm still inside, you know? But I'm not a very sociable person, so I'm not like a, a person who hits up bars, and if I go out to eat, like, what am I doing? Going out to eat at a sit-down restaurant by myself? I could invite some friends, of course, but even then, it's a little bit, it's a little bit iffy. They're not always available, and, and then am I going to be that guy who's like, let's go eat, let's go eat, let's go eat every single day? But by that point, I'm, if I'm going out to eat every day, that's a lot of money, and that's a lot of calories. So, I don't know. It's really in a weird scenario that I'm not quite sure how to handle or what the, how to think about it. Because, yeah, having my rest area is here at home. At the same time, my rest area or my work area is here at home. I'm able to differentiate it to an extent. I do have an office. And by having an office, it's nice to have all that there and not have it in the bedroom, for example, because some people work out of their bedroom, and that's generally just a, not a very good idea. Because I think there's some kind of mental thing about mixing it all together or whatever it is. But I'm even then, my my play area is also the office. Uh, so I'm you know I'm also playing games with my buddies on my computer at the office. I feel like I need to have like a separate desk. 
in order or something in order to have fun with people but even then that might not be the best i don't know it's kind of strange like i think i should definitely make a second desk for warhammer painting because i have it to my right right here all my painting stuff i should definitely make a second desk for warhammer painting because then that's very specific It'll be easier to do, and then it's like, okay, this is my hobbying area. This is for fun and relaxation. As for actual gameplay, though, it's really difficult to swap it around because obviously, well, I record my games on here. So breaking those mental barriers, hell, maybe actually going out and being the hipster at the coffee shop is good for my mental barrier in its own right. There's a whole psychology to this. There's actually a book I'm trying to listen to. It's called How Not to Die. Uh, it's a whole book involving, like, things to w health, wellness, and, and mental state, and all that kind of stuff. And it's a really fascinating book. I, I might need to do some double-checking on the internet about some of the facts in it, because I'd rather not immediately go in there without citation. But I've been really enjoying that. Check it out on Audible. It's kind of long. It's like 17 hours, but it's just called How Not to Die. And and it's, I don't know. It's, it's really nice. Uh, it, it feels, it's giving me some good life tips, calling family members, uh, I don't know, that kind of stuff. It, it, it'd be good. It'd be good. Uh, lots going on. Next week is actually when I'm going to see my apartment and, and actually have it to myself. So the, ne the next video will probably be talking about that a little bit. So stay tuned. There's a lot going on and uh, we'll have a good chat next week. I'll see you later.